opening meeting at uh, 6.45. A request for an interpreter. Does anyone need an interpreter? ¿Alguien necesita traducción? No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just done already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 2.0, call to order. 3.0, roll call. Juan Pablo Huerta. Here. Sabrina Gomez. Here. Ruben Macarino. Present. Alice Lopez. Here. John Vasquez. Here. And myself, John Alvarez. Uh, could we please stand for the flag salute? If I could have our first graders lead us in the flag salute. Ready, guys? Put your hand over your heart and you got it. Go for it. Ready? Go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, children. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Okay, uh, 4.0, 4.1, adoption, adoption of the agenda is requested as presented. Move with the deletion of 12.3. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5.0, 5.0, consent calendar. Approval of regular board minute, uh, mini, meeting minutes for March 14th, 2023. Move, second. Alice Lopez. Sabrina Gomez, all in favor? Aye. 5-0. 5.2, approval of release warrants dated March 9th, 2023 in the amount of $267,432.13. March 16th, 2023 in the amount of $135,705.81. Move. Alice Lopez. Second. Ruth Macarino, all in favor? Aye. 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 Six point zero, awards and presentation. Six point one, K one poetry performance. And if we could have Miss Miss Ramos and Miss Paz, please come up to the podium. Do you want them up here or do you want them in front? In the front right here. Okay. We're going to go over to the side. We're going to go over there. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Ms. Paz, if we can have the, our wonderful students come and stand here in the front. Yes. So, today we are presenting for poetry and prose from uh, Hester Elementary. And if our students from K in first grade can come up to the front, please. Wait. wait I'm going to call them. Okay. Yes. You'll be coming up in the front when we call you. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, for all of us students, please uh, give Ms. Paz a thank you, a big round of applause, because she's the one that let us uh, participate in the poetry and prose and gave you all a pizza party. So what do you say to Ms. Paz? <laughs> okay, well, J.E. Hester School provides students with the opportunity to perform poetry festivals throughout the surrounding area. Our students performed at the Tulare County Office of Education, Poetry and, Pro on, and Prose on March 21st. We were scheduled to go to Fresno State University to perform at their Peach Blossom. However, due to severe weather conditions, we had to cancel the Peach Blossom uh, Poetry Festival in Fresno uh, for the safety of all our students. However, I coached along with their classroom teachers instructional aides, and of course, parents. All together, we helped our students learn their poems. And all the students were extremely motivated and practiced at school and at home to learn their poems. Students represented the district well, and all received a superior rating. Superior is the highest rating they could achieve. Let's give them all a big round of applause. Hester School uh, encourages family participation in academics and also in other special events. Therefore, we held a poetry assembly at Hester School, and our students were able to recite their poems for their peers, their parents, family, and uh, staff. 
So they did a great job. Let's give them another round of applause. They worked so hard. <laughs> and all these festivals provided by Ms. Paz and our board, of course, uh, is a great way for students to develop self-esteem, confidence, and a love for oral interpretation. Therefore, we have four selections for you today. We're going to start with Mrs. Saldivar's first grade classroom reciting, My Dog Has Got No Manners. Is, please come up. Yes, just stand right there. And when I say your name, I want you to wave at the audience, okay? Let's, Alex Velasco. Camila Mendoza. Olivia Rosas. And Mario Hernandez. Scoot up a little bit so you're not leaning against the... <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's why they got a superior rating. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Alvarado's kindergarten class, uh, students reciting, My sister is a sissy and my brother. We have Ismael Santillan, <laughs> Elena Amescua, Thank you very much. Great job. <laughs> Next, we have Mrs. Reynoso's dual language immersion students reciting Tortellitas para Mama. Come on up. Jocelyn. Okay, 
wave when I say your name. You're fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Mateo Montalvo. <laughs> Acela Santillan. Jesse Estrada. Jocelyn Cortez. Yes, I said, you. Thank you very much. Great job. Next we have Mrs. Lunas and Mrs. Setzer's first grade students reciting superheroes. Please come up. <laughs> okay, we have Anna Orozco, <laughs> Emily Flores, <laughs> Alia Sanchez, <laughs> Jove Morales, <laughs> Raya Valera. Thank you very much. Great job. You can say the last one. Go ahead, say the last one. She doesn't want to. Just start, start again. Over. Say, I'll, I'll help all the poor. Start with that. If I was a superhero, you can do it. One, two, three. If I was a superhero, my Sally Gray. One, two, three. If I Thank you very much. Great job. And that's what we learn to do. If we make a mistake or stop, we just start right over and it comes out great. Again, I want to thank Ms. Paz.
the board and um, Dr. Chavez for allowing us to go to poetry festivals. It's really great for the students. It really builds their self-esteem and helps them get up and speak in front of the public. Um, and of course, I'd like all parents to stand up because we could not have done it without you. Stand up, parents! All of you have supported your children in academics and extracurricular activities, and they could not have learned the poem if you hadn't helped them at home. So the Hester staff thanks you very much. A round of applause for all our parents and students. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, 6.2, a student board member report. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to say my student report is not going to be a poetry. <laughs> um, right now at Farmersville High School, we have visitors from WAS going around campus. On Sunday, many kids and myself had a chance to give the WAS members a tour around campus. It was a very fun experience, and I also learned a lot why they are here and what they do. Moving on to sports, our baseball team had a game yesterday where we came out with a win, and our softball team also had a game yesterday where we came out with an unfortunate loss. Coming up on Thursday, we will have buff ball, a buff ball game against our girls' volleyball team and our boys' athletes and our teachers. On Friday, we are having College Career Day where we get to experience new careers. That's all I have for you today. Thank you. I tell you what, if uh, kids, if you would like to go, we're going get, to get into the real boring stuff now, so, okay, <laughs> if you like to go, you can leave now. Let's give our parents and families a big round of applause. Good and job. we'll have to have another performance next meeting so we can get all yeah. the Bye, same people good back. Job. You great. guys did Thank so you. good. <laughs> oh no, it was the best. <laughs> Thank you, Senor. Oh. Okay, Judged man. Judged it? Thank you. Oh. You're awesome. Oh, we should have judged it. You gotta give me candy. That one's like you give me candy or I give you candy? I lost around one of the side leaders. <laughs> You're talking my language. Seniors. <laughs> they did so good. No, we should have got it. Uh, any seniors in the room, uh, if you'd like to come forward to the front, couple of rows, seniors. Uh, Dibus, you're not a senior, you're an oldie. Yeah. That was really great. Yeah, Mr. Dibus, if you can help us get the seniors to come and sit in the front rows, front two rows. Yeah. But you guys know you have to recite a poem, though, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, please join me in giving our seniors a big round of applause. And, and we're very grateful to the high school because they made it now uh, an obligation for our students to take part in at least one board meeting. And I think that's critical because it's important that our our children understand how governance works in their district. This is their district. And so, once again, if we can give them a big round of applause, welcome, children, all of you. All right, sir. Okay, moving on to uh, 6.3, uh, Richard Dibus, Athletic Director, Isaiah Unified Water Polo, requests for use of Aquatic Center. Yeah. Okay. Take one, pass it down. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for common, huh? Huh? It's just for common? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a presentation. Okay. Okay. Um, I was talking to uh, Dr. Chavez the other day. He asked me to give an update on aquatics at the high school. 
Um, I know we see our big, beautiful pool. We don't necessarily always see what's going on inside of it. Um, board members, you, you have notes there that kind of cover all the different things, but I'll review them. Um, so first, our PE um, classes use the pool two units a year. They actually use it for three full weeks in the fall and three full weeks in the spring. Um, the first set of units has a majority of the focus on pool safety. Um, a lot of our kids haven't swam, haven't been in the pool. Um, they'll talk about the use of the AED. They'll talk about the use of the safety equipment around the pool. Um, and they will cover that both inside and outside of the water. Um, after that, they do take part in a swim test. Um, that kind of separates out students into beginning and intermediate. Um, and then they go with you know, uh, some basic swim lessons from there, um, as well as obviously some fun involved in the unit. Um, but that is the first set of three weeks. The second set of three weeks in spring, and obviously fall and spring because of the weather. Um, they will review the pool safety and the safety equipment use because students may have transferred into the class, they may not have transferred from another school, um, and also it's always good to spend extra time on safety around the pool. Um, they continue with the swim lessons, so some of those beginning ones from fall may move to the intermediate group um, in the spring. Some of the newer ones may stay in the beginning group. Um, they'll introduce water polo or what it is, what it looks like, um, and how that works. They'll also introduce swim, the sport itself, so the, different, the four different strokes that you can swim, um, how a relay might look, um, and then diving as well, how to safely use the diving board um, at the pool. So that is one of the major ways we're using it during the day. Um, we have a swim and water polo team. Um, our coach, Ali Felstead, is here. Um, just real quick about that before I even get into this. So water polo this year, we had our first games against Granite Hills. Um, unfortunately, um, we, our pool was down for about a week, and it was the week we were going to play. So we ended up traveling to Granite Hills. I got to go to that first game. Um, some people know I'm a swimmer and water polo player. Uh, my high school started water polo when I was a freshman and I scored the first goal in school history. Um, and this year I got to go to Farmersville's first game and watch our kids score their first goal in school history, uh, which is a pretty awesome moment yeah. as an athletic director and also for the program. Um, they proceeded to score like six or seven more, so <laughs> it wasn't the only one. Um, but that was a really cool moment. So each uh, sport is 10, about 10 weeks long. Um, we're working on getting into our first water polo league for next year. Um, we played in our first set of games this year. Uh, I think we ended the season with uh, about eight students out consistently, um, which was, was up. Um, aquatics can be difficult to build, um, so it may sound like a small number, but that is a lot consistently coming to practice. Um, swim, we are at, um, I have over 10 here. We did have that many come out, but we have nine that are showing up every day. They were at the swim meet on um, uh, last week, and they did really, really well. Um, we haven't started necessarily keeping records yet, but they are setting the records that, that do exist for the short time we've had it. Um, and it looks like as far as swimming against Woodlake, I know last year, I think on the girls' side, we actually beat Woodlake in a swim meet. Um, so they are getting more and more competitive. Um, we're actually hosting the East Sequoia Championships for all um, eight teams in our league on April 28th. So that'll be at the pool. It'll start at 3 o'clock. Um, that'll be a really big event. We'll have you know, probably somewhere between 50 and 100 swimmers there. Um, the after school program is the next way that we've been utilizing the pool, um, working with Alma and Tom Felstead, um, as well as Allie, um, April and May of last year. And then the plan, hopefully, is for this year as well. Um, students were bused over from the junior high to the high school pool. And Tom and Allie donated their time um, while after school program had their club and were basically teaching swim lessons and water polo. Um, and so those kids were getting to participate in that. Um, that's kind of a, a double piece where kids are learning to swim. We're also getting them interested in aquatics so that when they're coming to high school, we're building up those numbers for water polo and swim. Um, and the, the hope is that we can continue that and possibly even expand it this year, include high school kids and in the future, um, maybe even include other um, after school program uh, events or clubs. Um, the next one's athletic training and recovery. Um, we do have sports that will use the pool for um, training and recovery. Um, obviously, there will be a lifeguard on duty. Um, but for track, for example, after a tough meet, 
you can go to the pool, you can work in the shallow end, um, and it takes a lot of pressure off of their joints. It's a lot safer um, and takes care of our athletes uh, to keep them competing at a high level. Um, and then lastly, um, it's the title of the, uh, the presentation itself, but the V-Nited Club, uh, while they are not all Farmersville, um, we do have our first Farmersville student who has joined the club, um, Iris. Um, they threw a whole party for her when she joined the club. Um, she's been going regularly and doing fantastic. Yeah. So, um, over the last two years, um, they've thrown five free swim and water polo clinics for FUSD students specifically. Um, and they're interested in throwing another one in late April. Um, and then, as you've heard the name Fell said a few times, um, Allie runs our swim and water polo program. Tom is a volunteer coach for us as well. Um, they've invested time and resources into, into growing our programs. Uh, they may not be from Farmersville, but they've put the time and the effort into uh, building up that program. And so um, that's kind of what I have. Um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Sabrina? Um, congratulations on yeah. joining. Uh, maybe you can recruit some more kids to come. <laughs> but I don't have any questions. Yeah. Uh, what school did you uh, attend when you did the first school? Uh, high school was Los Banos High School, uh -huh. and then I played at Occidental College. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, now you said that the, the team is preparing to get into a league next year. Yeah. Now our other, um, I re recall water polo is usually have perennial schools such as Redwood, Menachee. Right. So are schools such as Woodlake, Lindsay, Cutler, Rossi, are they developing programs as well as Farmersville? Um, so the schools you named have not as of yet. Um, Granite Hills is the other school in our area that is about at our level who we played this year. Um, but I've actually been working with uh, Bud Luther, the athletic director at Granite Hills, to find some other small schools that have started programs mm -hmm. and the league will be based with that. Okay. So that way we're not jumping into a league that's a much higher level than we are. Um, I remember that experience in high school and it's not fun. Um, so we are trying to find, you know, four or five schools that are, are new to water polo or maybe have had a program for two or three years so that it is like size and, and competitive. Right. right. Well, I think that's wonderful actually. And it's a great, great program to get in shape for our students, whatnot. And I'm really happy to hear how the pool is being utilized. Uh, you know, after farmers for many years have been wanting a pool and it's so great to see that water polo, other athletic training such as, and also recovery is being used for that. So thank you for that. And the fell stands for being part of the program as well. Alice? No, thank you. John? No, thank you for the presentation. Hey, thanks. Travis? And I, I didn't mention it here because I, I, it's so big that I didn't know if I needed mentioning the summer swim program, which yeah. we will be doing again, um, open for the community and swim lessons and things like that. Right. So that's not you specific to the high school, <laughs> so I didn't have it listed there, but that's another way it's being used all summer. So okay. thank you. Sure, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 8.0, public comments. Members of the public may address the board on any <coughs> agenda item or other item of interest within the subject and matter jurisdiction of the board. Before, during the governing board's consideration of the item, the board uh, is not able to discuss or take action on any item not appearing on the agenda. Pursuit to board policy, the board may limit individual comments to no more than three minutes, individual topics uh, to 20 minutes. Please begin your comments by stating your name. Do you have anyone? Yes, in addition, yes, the board asks that during public comment, everyone be respectful of the speakers. Members of the public shall not interrupt or interject while another person is giving their public comment at the podium. During the public comment, there shall be no use of foul language. Should a member of the public have a concern about a specific employee, we ask that you direct those concerns to me, the superintendent, after this meeting so that the concerns can be handled through the proper procedures. And please do not use employee or student names during public comment. Uh, board President, we have uh, two speakers. Uh, first one is Joanne Benitez. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joanne Benitez, and let me introduce myself for those who may not know who I am. I am the school secretary at the junior high school, and I am also the chapter president of CSEA. 
representing the classified employees of this district. I am here with some of the members um, for a few reasons. One, to help teach them and allow them to learn about the process and the meetings that oversee the district operations. I'm also here to say hello to everyone, but also to clarify some of the information I presented up here at the last meeting, as some of the financial impact I presented was incorrect. Um, so I had brought up the fact that we're negotiating with the district and members with longevity, meaning we've worked 10 years or greater with the district, are seeking a little perk. We're at the end of the salary schedule, so that's one of the things we're asking for. And I mentioned that the fiscal impact would be about $10,000 for all 49 members. And I stand corrected, and this has been clarified in negotiations as well. It's closer to 30. But, you know, that's a, that's a big difference. Um, but also, as a union president, I want to represent my bargaining unit members as a whole. I'm very strong on unity, equality, and what I do is for all, not for individuals. So it's a little disheartening at um, our last negotiation session to learn that some of our members, new hires to the district, have not been given an equal opportunity. Rather, they've been given a benefit because they're not hired at the first salary step like the rest of us were. Mm -hmm. That's a problem for me, and it's a problem for my members. And um, well, I would never want any of the members that have benefited from the, uh, you know, the benefits the district has allowed them to have on a higher salary, higher salary schedule. Um, it also is a fiscal impact and an increase in the cost. So when we're being told no, being here for decades in this district, it makes us question how that's fair, how that's equal, and why it's not all or none. So, uh, you know, when these items are presented to you, my hope is that you take our request into consideration as a whole. We're not here for individualism. Um, and keep in mind that the employees that work in this district the longest currently have the least perks because we're maxed out on our salary schedule. So unless we negotiate a raise, that's what we get. But regardless, we're here every day for the kids of Farmersville. Um, I would hope that our union letter to the district will stop and remedy this practice, which I'm sure it has. Um, I'm here today to demonstrate what exceptional leadership is. You make an error, you correct it, and you keep moving forward. Uh, my goal is to keep working collaboratively with the district because, um, you know, that's what good leaders do. The best interest for me is the employees and members, and I hope that uh, that's what's in your mind as well when you make these decisions. The students it affects and the employees that serve them either in a direct instructional or, or non-instructional and supportive capacity. Um, with that, thank you for your time and thank you for my members for being here today from one meeting to this meeting. I appreciate everything you guys do and thanks for all you do and taking time away from your families to join us here tonight. And I would like to ask the board at the close of the public comments if we can go ahead and excuse the members as well to return to their families, that would be appreciated. Have a good night. Next, we have uh, Charlotte Jones. Please come forward. Thank you. And that's the last speaker on the list. Good evening, board members and people here, staff, students. Nice to see all you seniors here. My name is Charlotte Jones. I'm the finance clerk at Farmersville High School, and I have been here in this district for 23 years. My children were two and three years old when I started working here, and then now they're 25 and 26. So I've been here a long time, and I have seen a lot. A lot of people come and go, and a lot of people in the CSEA union I've seen here with me. I think I'm there are 15 or so people that are classified members that have been here longer than me. 
which ties into uh, what I would like to discuss very briefly. I am the CSCA treasurer and I am a uh, negotiating team member for CSCA. Um, we are currently negotiating a, uh, a 9 percent raise and a raise in longevity and that's to, uh, about what I'm speaking of. I'm kind of reiterating what Joanne um, talked about. This is something that is important to me and a lot of members because we do not get the steps. We're done stepping. Um, people that have been here less than me um, will continue to advance across and also have their salary increase, which is negotiated. But it has come to our attention that um, HR has been not following the correct hiring protocol for new employees, and we feel that while that's great for the new employees, it really hurts the ones that have been here the longest the most, and our membership as a whole, basically. For example, a starting person, if, if HR negotiated their um, employment to start at step five, then in five years, that particular employee will be making as much as me, and I've been here 23. And while, again, that's great for the new employee, it really hurts the ones that have been here the longest. I, um, four years ago, they I squared off our CSEA uh, salary schedule and it was so that the ones that were starting first, we moved them up because of the uh, cost of living, because of the minimum wage and so forth, but it, we didn't do anything for the people that have been here the longest. <coughs> so um, at this point, uh, we haven't been able to uh, convince the board that the longevity raise is something that our members really, really deserve. Uh, we have, I just received the um, longevity or the um, list of, of um, people that have been here the longest, and we have 168 CSCA employees right now, as of today. And those in those that are requesting the longevity, there's 21 employees that have been here 20 plus years. There are 16 employees that have been here 15 plus years and 12 employees that have been here 10 plus years. So out of 168 employees, at this point, there's only 49 that would be affected. And while we, um, it, it, we're small in numbers as far as the percentage of CSCA employees, these people, they will stay here if they know that there are perks and there are, you know, incentives for being members of CSEA and of Farmersville Unified. So in closing, I just want to uh, thank you for letting me speak. And again, to reiterate, we're negotiating for a 9% raise for our current salary schedule and an increase in our longevity for our long-term employees. So thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, 8.1, uh, superintendent's comment. Um, I want to start off by, again, acknowledging all of our people that are here today. Uh, if we can give another round of applause to the little ones that came. It, you have no idea the power of the impact when they are here taking part of governance, whether they realize it or not. That doesn't really matter. What matters is that they're here and they feel that they are heard and that they are seen. Secondly, I want to give a big shout out to all of our high school students. We can please give them a big round of applause. You know, and just know that it makes me so happy to know that it's been part of the requirement for you guys to come to these meetings because at the end of the day, everything that we do, we do for you. And I keep saying that over and over and over again, and I will continue to do so until it becomes internalized. My goal in the future with the juniors to become seniors is to not only be present, but speak at the podium. So if anybody wants to take that step now, by all means. But it's important that we collectively, myself as a superintendent, our board and our staff, that we hear from you. Okay. It's so important that we hear from you because it's, education is a constant movement. It's a constant improvement on skills of, of teaching and learning. And so it's important that we hear from you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what it's all about. We will not grow 
as a district until we remedy and heal as a district in making sure that our babies are being heard, and I mean that in a very respectful way, and that we're also hearing from our wonderful staff in making sure of taking this district to the very top. We have the potential. I'm surprised every single day at the amount of potential that is out there, both among our adults, staff, and our wonderful students. And so I just want to commend you, and I want to thank you for coming. This is, by all means, your house. Next, uh, along those lines, I want to put a shout out that on May 4th, uh, I've been having community forums, as most of you should know. Uh, we had, we, we've had two. We have our last one, because I promised the community three. And the third one will be May 4th. So if you want to write that down on a piece of paper or your arm, uh, mm -hmm. it'll be at 6 o'clock. And I ask that you bring your parents. That's another opportunity to hear from your parents who have entrusted us with your education. And we need to hear if we've done a good job, if there's room for improvement, or if we're not doing our job. So we need to hear all of that. Okay? And so it'll be at 6 o'clock on May 4th at Freedom Cafeteria. Next, I'm sure uh, all of the students were not aware but next week is spring break, right? You guys didn't know that, right? Okay. Yeah. You probably, you know, had that written down somewhere, right? In the in the restroom walls or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you guys don't want to hear what I gotta say. All right, that's all right. Yeah. If you gotta go, you gotta go. By all means, let's give our staff a big round of applause. Next, I want to share with you that we are in the middle of approving our LCAP, which is the plan that we have as a district on how to improve the level of instruction for future generations. You can argue and say, well, I'm already a senior. I get it, but I, I need you to start thinking about your younger brothers and sisters. You want them to always have even a better experience than what you had. I hope you had a wonderful experience, but we want your younger siblings, neighbors, friends, primos, to really have a great experience. And so we need to hear from you. And part of that piece, I sent out a copy of the LCAP to everybody in this room. Well, almost everybody. All of the staff received it via email and all of the parents, it was sent out through Parent Square. Because I want everybody to have a copy of the LCAP and everybody to have the information of how we're doing as a district. Because that should be transparent. I'm all about transparency. Okay, if we're going to heal, we have to be transparent. Uh, and lastly, I, I want to just thank our wonderful Hester students. They're not here anymore, but if they're watching the tape, and to all of our Spanish-speaking parents, muchísimas gracias por este apoyo de traer a sus niños a venir a dar su poesía a los demás. So queremos seguir teniendo ese tipo de eventos dentro de las juntas uh, del board de directores aquí del distrito. What I said was, hello, great, awesome, we're good, <laughs> right? So thank you very much, Board President. That concludes my comments. Thank you. Okay, moving on, uh, 10.0, K through eight issues. 10.1, approval to attend Save the Children uh, mandatory training meeting on May 10th through the 12th, 2023 in San Francisco, California. Move. Alex Lopez. Second. John Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. 10.2. Acceptance of donations from Hester Open House Vendors. No. Second. Alice Lopez, John Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. 11.0. High school issues. 11.1. Approval to attend 2023 State CDE uh, Finals FFA on May 5th through the 6th at Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, California. Move. John Vasquez, <clears throat> Alice Lopez, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. 11.2, approval to attend Reno World Championship on March 30, 2023, April 2nd, 2023 at Reno Livestock Event Center. Move and a comment. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. Alice? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, just uh, congratulations to the <coughs> students that are uh, being able to participate in this. Um, I know that, yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, and uh, hopefully uh, the weather doesn't bar being able to attend. I know that they are looking forward to this and wishing them the best of luck. Okay. A motion by Alice, second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five oh. 11.3, approval to attend 2023 uh, Cal Council for Adult Education State Conference on April 12th to the 15th, 2023, Oakland, California. Move. John Vasquez. Second. Sabrina Gomez. All in Alice favor? Alice. Alice. Oh, Alice? Oh, sorry. Alice Lopez. Alice Lopez, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 12.0 curriculum, 12.1 approval of uh, 2022 through 2024, Tulare County Office of Education, CCOE, Cal College and Career, K-12 Strong Workforce Program, SWP4 Project Agreement. Move. Second. Is that Alice? Yes. Mm -hmm. John Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. 12.2, approval of 2023, Tulare County Office of Education, CCOE, Coaching, Facilitating and Professional Work Plan Agreement for Farmersville High School. Move. John Vasquez. Second. Alice Lopez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. Uh, 12.4, approval of MTSS Professional Learning Institute on July 17th through 20th, 2023, at Anaheim, California. Move. John Second. Vasquez. <clears throat> Second. Louis Macarino. All in favor? Aye. 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 Question. Question? <coughs> uh, Sabrina, any questions? No, that was my question. Yeah, I know. Sabrina, do you have a question just in case? No. Ruben? Okay. Alice? Uh, this is all going to be paid out of a. Um, Grant, is that correct? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mendez, if you can come up to the podium, please. You're okay? Can I speak from here? Or do I? Yeah, we need to make sure that it's all recorded on, on TMZ. So we can come back and say he said it, it's recorded. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm not going to yell in this microphone. Um, I want to thank the, our progressive district for another opportunity. We did uh, have the opportunity last year to go. This is a state mandate in regards to multi-tiered systems of supports. We do have funding. If you note it on, the, um, uh, on your paperwork in front of you, it's coming out of the ESSA grant and also our MTSS grant. Mm -hmm. That's all money that's been set aside for us to utilize for professional development. With the state, statewide movement, uh, there's gonna be representatives from, from each one of our sites here, Farmersville Unified School District, and also uh, I would say about 90% of all the districts in the state of California. I want to thank you. I knew the answer, but if there was anyone out there that had the question, especially looking at the numbers, I wanted them to be aware of that same answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. I also do want to add that we were granted $250,000 last year, okay, uh, also to participate with professional development. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see Any more questions? Nope. Okay, uh, mostly by John. Correct. Mm -hmm. Second by Ruben. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> uh, 12.5. Uh, Champions Recovery Alternative Program Presentation. Yeah, Mr. Mendez, if you can come back up. You should have just stayed up there. <laughs> I am very excited to present to, to, to the board and to the members here tonight uh, uh, two amazing men that do a lot of work in our community, uh, Mr. Frank Reese and Mr. Manny Castro. Um, you might be familiar with Mr. Castro. He's uh, used to work here at Farmersville Unified School District with a lot of our kids before. And they're gonna get an opportunity to present some of the work and some of the options that they are willing to uh, give us here at Farmersville Unified School District. Thank you. Hi, hi my name is Frank Reese. I'm, with, uh, I'm the Executive Director for Champions Recovery. And um, I, I'm actually from Exeter. My family's from Exeter, and I went to school with several people here in this room, and, um, and, and so it, it's, a, it's a blessing to be here. Um, but uh, I wanted to let you know a, little, know a little bit overall about what we do as an agency. I'm going to turn it over to Manny because he really does uh, the brunt of the work. And so Champions Recovery, what we do is we specialize in doing 
drug treatment and other related services for individuals um, in Kings and Tulare County. And we look to serve those individuals with justice involvement, um, who are, you know, may struggle with homelessness, uh, whether that's chronic or just temporary. Um, individuals that are dealing with mental health issues, as well as individuals that are, you know, dealing with trauma and domestic violence. And so we seek to serve those individuals in the community that, um, that, are, that are really need help the most. And we're a nonprofit organization. We've been around since 2001. And the last four years, we've really been making a concerted effort to come into Tulare County to provide the services because we see a huge need in Tulare County to do this work. Um, I'm from here, obviously, and, I, and, and so I'm gonna turn it over to Manny to talk about the youth intervention services that we recently uh, really started investing more into doing to serve our, the youth in our communities. So Manny. Good evening, board. Thank you for having us. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Manny Castro, and for the past 15 years, I've had the honor and the privilege of serving the most marginalized uh, young men and women in our county. And those are young men and women impacted by gangs here in Tulare County. Um, and Mr. Mendez is right. I walked campus at Farmersville High probably about 15, 20 years ago as a chaplain, uh, and I got to know quite a few of your students here. Um, <clears throat> so in November, of 2022, uh, we started working alongside VUSD to help uh, de-escalate and address some of the biggest issues they were having. Oh, Vice Unified School District, I'm sorry. Um, and so we put, so through some of that work that we did in November, um, we, we ended up uh, with the full-time uh, position work contracted and doing some of the, the, the toughest work again, in our county, um, and that is working, again, with justice involved uh, and gang impacted students in our county. So, so what we do is we go out on campus, we have a youth intervention staff assigned to specific campuses and the feeder schools as well, and our job is, is um, to connect and to mentor, again, some of the toughest kids in our county. Um, Along with that, we have the support of champions uh, and the, the, uh, our SUD programs, substance use disorder programs, anger management programs, and all, all of the evidence-based curriculum um, that a regular mentoring program wouldn't have. Um, I've been a mentor, as I said, for over 20 years, um, or over 15 years, with a lot of the, the gang-impacted students here in Tulare County. Um, so. Um, it was an honor and it was a pleasure to come to work for Champions and get the support um, that we need. Um, because when you're mentoring these young men and, and these young students, you need resources. You, you, need, you need other things to help um, move them through um, wh whatever, whatever issues they're having. And you need, we need more resources to help, again, help address a lot of their needs. And a lot of that is dealing with trauma dealing with substance abuse, pro with the substance abuse, and dealing with anger management issues. Um, so we'd like to serve in that capacity. We're, we're, we're here to serve and to do whatever we can for Farmersville School District. Um, and so that kind of concludes my presentation. If there's any questions for myself or for... Yeah, I'd just like to add a little bit. Um, so what we specialize in is really getting to the root causes of uh, certain behaviors that are negative that impact Indi these individual youth, their families in the community. And so we specialize in really getting to the heart issues. But in order to do that, we look for creative ways of engaging youth. And so we're looking for, di so some of the stuff that we were, were beginning to implement is connecting with youth over art, uh, whether that's like graffiti, uh, uh, per per um, doing music, preparing music, or uh, we're looking at starting a, a small business engagement program, smart, you know, do entrepreneurship training for the youth to teach them how to run businesses. And so we look for just cre and different creative angles um, to be able to engage the, the hearts of the youth, doing things that they want to do, which give us an opportunity to then speak into their life and begin um, going deeper into a lot of these root areas where that, 
that they're really struggling in. So we just don't go out there and say, hey, this is your problem. We look at developing relationships first and then being able to earn the right to speak into the, the you know, what's going on in not only in the lives of the, of the youth, but also in the families and the communities that they live in. And so that's a little bit about what we do. We, uh, we've been doing, um, so we've been working with youth for the last four years, primarily with probation, youth that are on probation, um, that, that need um, individual family therapy or substance use uh, disorder treatment. And now we're looking at really getting into some of these other youth that, um, so a lot of the, there's a little, a lot of overlap with the youth that um, we're talking about there and the youth that have been impacted by gangs in, in their uh, families or communities. And so um, that's a little bit about what we do. And yeah, just to. Mm -hmm. And just add one, one, of, one of the uh, current projects that we're working on in collaboration with, v, with Vice Unified School District is we've, um, we're working on a bike building project. We're in, we're doing an eight week project with that. And we're in our third week of that. We've got five young men um, that were chosen from a specific campus um, with Vice Unified. And um, these young men are building bikes. They're building lowrider bikes um, with a, a, a shop in Goshen. And that program is going extremely well. The kids are excited, they're engaged. Um, and along with that, we have mentors um, that show up and that work side by side with these young men. Um, in addition to that, we've also got um, five or six uh, um, young men from another campus that are working at a stereo shop, um, to, again, to, to gain those vocational skills and to, to um, do things in the community. But the biggest thing behind that is the mentoring and the partnerships that, that we're creating with these uh, students all in our community. So, uh, any questions, uh, Sabrina? Um, not really any questions, but just to say thank you and the work that you guys do is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Ruben? Uh, yes. Um, now, you did mention the methods that you would um, reach out to the students that, that need services, right? Um, those that need the most support or service. Uh, how do you identify those? Do you work with county services? Do you get referrals from teachers? I mean, how does that work in terms of getting those that aren't being reached or aren't going to go heard up about the program? I like to do that. And, you know, how do we get those guys? So on each respective campus, um, there's what they so in, in with Vice Unified School District, they have specific counselors okay. assigned to the most at risk students. We, part, we're, we are in partnership with those um, counselors, and that's, it's, it's, it's a referral process, but it's also just a relationship, because right. we're, we're actually on campus um, pretty much the, the, the majority of the day, mm -hmm. and our, our work crosses over into the community, as, which is where the bike club and all of the other things that Mr. Ruiz explained um, cross over into the community. Um, but we do partner with specific um, people on campus, mm -hmm and we partner with them to provide a supplemental service or to be the resource for that counselor. I see. And so once that is, the student is identified, uh, what would, is, I know it, it works differently perhaps, but what is the next step? I mean, does the, uh, do you have a, a meeting with the parents or together at Kumbaya with the counselor? How does that? Well, be, the way it's set up with the Vice City Unified School District is because of our because of our partnership and because we're contracted, um, we're, we don't need to get any permission slips. We don't need to do anything beyond that because we're really in a partnership with the school district and because they're already working specifically with that counselor. I see. So we just come in again as a supplement and an additional resource. <clears throat> thank you. No, thank you for the Danny Frank, hey, thank you for uh, Presentation. Mm -hmm. I've worked with these guys before. I'd like to sort of use some of them. Do a great job. So, thank you. Me as well. Twelve years ago, right? Yeah. Great program. <clears throat> I like the outreach to the business community. I think it's very important. To inspire a youth, a mentor, uh, show them another path. Sure. It reaches the heart of a child, and you're successful. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Some of it. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Twelve point six approval of Grand Canyon University educational development. Oh. <laughs> uh, where, where are we? 
Oh, I'll move. Sorry. Motion. John Vasquez. I second. Sabrina Gomez. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Oh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Twelve point seven <laughs> approval of uh, memoranda of understanding with Tulare County Office of Education, Tobacco Use Prevention, Education (TUPE) Consortium and TUPE Tier Two Comprehensive Program Partners. Oh. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Oh. 13.0 personnel, 13.1 approval of certif cert certificated personnel item 13.1.1 through item 13.1.8. Move. Alice? Second. Is that Alice? Yes. Yes. John Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. 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 5-0. 13.2 approval of classified personnel item 13.2.1 through item 13.2.2. .2. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. 13.3, approval of extracurriculum activity coaching personnel, item 13.3.1. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. <coughs> A 13.4 personnel action report information only. 13.5 approval of bilingual authorization waiver to teach dual immersion for Maria L. Barras at Barrios at Freedom School. Move. Alice Lopez. Second. Ruben. Yes. Ruben Macarino. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> 13.6, approval of custodian two settlement agreement with California School Associ uh, Employees Association. Move. Alice Lopez. Second. Ruben Macarino. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. 13.7, approval of a uh, memorandum of understanding with Farmsville Teachers Association regarding independent study. Move. Alice Lopez. Second. Sabrina Gomez. All in favor? Aye. 5-0. 13.8. Approval of administrators. Management. Summer school pay. Move. Second. Alice Lopez. Yes. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. 14.0. Board business. 14.1. Consideration of any item. Any board member. Any member of the board wishes to have on a future agenda or provide a written update? Uh, Sabrina? Not this time. Nothing. Thank you. Ruben? No, nothing this time. Alice? Nothing at this time. John Vasquez? Nothing at this time, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Sweet. Okay, 15.0. Uh, uh, new property architect proposal discussion. Mr. Pat Mott. Good evening, everybody. And um, <coughs> I'm going to show uh, two different uh, proposals that the architects uh, for the district uh, <coughs> has made for the uh, new maintenance facility. Uh, we'll go through option one. And this is by integrated design. And um, if you'll excuse me just a minute, I cannot read what's on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad, I can't read it either. I have trifolds. <laughs> it was larger earlier. Yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah. Right yeah. behind everybody, there's a bigger. There, we, we have a big screen there. Uh, Zoom in, Chris. No, they got they have really good eyes, they can see everything, right? <laughs> the high school kids can see it, right? Probably see the little screen right here, probably. So, yeah. Oh. So, on the uh, first option, um, we uh, go over some of the uh, costs just to do cover the parking area. Now, we do have a uh, solar. Uh, 
arrays going up on the new property uh, over on Visalia Road, which is separate from this uh, as projects. So the, uh, the development uh, for the parking area, uh, clear grub, grading, uh, paving, drive approaches, curb and gutter, concrete walkway, um, striping, uh, parking bumpers, landscape irrigation, chain link fence. And I'll go over in, in just a minute uh, with the layout of the proposed parking area for option one. But these are just the categories uh, that are involved with developing that parking. There's infrastructure, working with the city, uh, doing all the drain tie-ins. Uh, we also have power, gas, electric, and phone uh, that we're gonna have to work in as well. Um, so the, on, the, on option one, um, they're showing 1.695, 941 million. Um, and then that would be the first phase. And the first phase of each project is important because it helps with developing the elevation levels for the solar project going in the summer. So the solar companies requested that we at least decide on uh, the parking area, uh, otherwise it will hold up the solar project. Uh, they need those elevations for their footings, for their electrical work, uh, that's part of their program. So the two, two uh, the parking area and the solar go hand in hand. So option one, phase two, um, that is for the building structure. Um, again, this area would not be developed uh, in the second phase until we start the second phase. And so you have more parking involved, you have more grading involved, uh, you have the building pads. Oh, sorry. There, what? there you go. There we go. Sorry about that, I'm new at this. This is my first PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, so thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so we have the building pads, the fire code requirements, concrete bollards, uh, so you're covering the concrete work, you're, you're covering the structures, all the infrastructure um, that goes with it, storm drains, uh, which would be tying into the city as well. Um, and this, this particular one, uh, we're looking at about mm, seven to eight million dollars uh, to develop it all the way through. So on the picture provided, um, I'm going to excuse myself from here for a second so I can go to the larger screen and just so everybody's on the same page. This area here is the developed area for phase one in both options mm -hmm. because our solar panel arrays are right here mm -hmm. and right here mm -hmm. in both. So we don't want to hold up on doing that. This is a phase two area and this is option one. Option one has a separated transportation center, also a large warehouse, uh, which would store all of our uh, current lawn mowing equipment, vehicles, stuff like that. Um, we also look at uh, you know storing warehouse supplies for custodial supplies as well in there. Quite large, enough room to grow for the next 25, 30 years uh, for the size of the farmers. And in the uh, parking area, uh, there, there's an option there to have a student drop-off is what it's showing. Um, and pros and cons to that, uh, when we first looked at the property, uh, it was to develop for st additional staff parking for Snowden and DCA. Um, and if we were to occupy with student parking, I, I wanted to show the option. Uh, there's just the one entrance and one exit on Visalia Road. Mm -hmm. So, but it does give you the option if we were to go that direction. Um, now, getting into the next. So this gives a little layout design on the next clip here. And it, it just basically shows some 
uh, exterior structural design. It also shows uh, so, uh, some offices, waiting area, um, and the transportation area. Uh, but there's also a training room. Uh, bus drivers have to do a minimum 10 hours a year of training. Um, so I think a training room is very important. Uh, that way they can set up and, and do their training. We can also do a lot of different types of training in there for all of our MOT staff. Um, and that is the side views of what the building would look like. Um, we're showing option two, phase one. Okay, so option two, phase one, this one here is 1.695 million. And this option two eliminates the student drop off. It just provides parking for staff. Uh, it provides fencing um, all the way through or all the way around the area to secure the area. Um, and this would be uh, one of the recommendations I would have uh, because this will help reduce uh, traffic on Farmersville Boulevard for our new uh, preschool program. It would help with DCA uh, with keeping students safe when they're exiting school. They can exit through the back. Um, and it just, it, it helps alleviate uh, Snowden's parking for staff. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we can just, distribute the parking a lot better between north and south of the campus. Um, so, uh, and again, this one here, it, it covers the paving, the footings, the infrastructure, the curbing, the striping of the lines. So it's a complete parking lot. Um, option two, phase two. So in this, particular one, uh, we're looking at about uh, nine, yeah. a little over nine million. Um, what we've done different on this one uh, is you still have all the components of building a structure with concrete slab, footings, parking. Um, this incorporates, um, and I'll excuse myself for a second so I can explain a little better. Uh, improvements uh, to the transportation center um, which you should be able to see on the screen where we have added additional stalls to the men's and women's bathroom uh, safety showers lockers um, things that are pretty required by uh, law now um, because if they like chemical showers if they got chemicals on them, they need to wash off uh, so uh, the, this, this plan was uh, helped and designed by the MOT staff, uh, the guys at the shop. These are things that they requested that would be helpful and useful. Um, and so I just wanted to present these two options. And um, end of the slideshow. Um, but those are the two options. So at this time, I'd li like to open it up for any questions the board may have. Sabrina? For, okay, for phase, phase two, would, what was the difference from the phase two and phase one as far as the drop-offs? So phase one would be a student drop-off in the parking oh. area. Okay. Phase two would be staff parking. Okay. So no drop-off, no student drop-off there. And it would be what it is currently for the drop-off 
currently for the drop off, which at right now is very safe. Yeah. A lot of ways, a lot of options for parents to go uh, where you would be in option one limited with yeah. one entrance and one exit. I'm a visual, so I was trying to see. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Ruben? No, no questions. Ellis? Thanks. Well, this is not going to be the only drop-off. You still ha are going to have the, the drop-off for um, the preschool at the front. And the one that is uh, for the other kids by bus is on the back side, which is so far away from the actual buildings. Um, so... They tend to get a little wet on the way from the bus to the walk. to the to the school, and also on the boulevard, you also have the cars backing up all the way out to the uh, the, the lights. That's true. Yeah. So I don't see how this would hurt at all. You know that people are still going to go wherever it's going to be faster for them. Mm -hmm. So if, if we have more than one drop off area. I'm hoping that this would help, and this is supposed to be also for parents to stop if they need to go into the office, which kind of gives us a little problem because our office is going to be on the other side. Yeah. That's, that's the only um, drawback, um, but, you know, one of the rain, main reasons that we wanted additional parking is because of all our ev events, we have nowhere for parents to park. Mm -hmm. So... I need to see which option is going to maximize both things that we're trying to accomplish. The parking for our parents, uh, staff, and get the drop-off safer. So um, that's one thing. The other thing is on the building itself, you did mention that uh, it's state required to have the showers. so. <coughs> That shouldn't be an option, right? It should still be in the very first portion of it. Yeah, it wasn't included in option one uh, with when the architects provided that. So when I reviewed it with the maintenance staff, you know, we wanted to put that in there. And then I brought it to their attention. And I says, we have to have showers because these guys may have chemicals, diesel, or any fuel on them. And that's where we put it in option two. So we probably should have gone back to the architects and told them if it's state required, you need mm -hmm. to have it in there, rather than make it sound like, you know, this would be nice to have. Mm. If it's state required, it's, it's better to know mm -hmm. if we have it in the first option. Um, that's just, you know, me just talking. But um, the other question is, um, when you do all the grading, cement, and all this, are they going to have to tear that up again just to put the footings and everything for the solar structures? I, uh, we're going to be coordinating with them uh, for that. Um, so that way, normally in most cases, <laughs> when they drill for the footings uh, and there's existing asphalt, whether it be new or old, they will have a, a big coring drill. So it makes a nice circle clean and finished. Um, in the uh, in the asphalt, I, I would prefer to get going on the grading on, on the driveway area, and pot, and I don't know on timing wise if it can be possible to pave it after the solar's been in, or if we have to do it before so they can core a nice hole and, and do it there to provide the parking uh, for next school year. So. We have a couple of a couple of uh, areas there to look at. Okay. And the drainage, will that be something that will drain like towards the middle and out to somewhere, or is it just going to be? Like the pool, how they created these big concrete vaults in the ground and created a drain system. That's, that's right. what's going to be created in the parking lot as part of the infrastructure. Okay. And those are all my questions. John? Go back to the map on phase two. Mm -hmm. Oh. The, all those little marks that you have around there, those are all parking spaces, correct? Correct. Okay, and that's not only on the east side, but also on the west side, correct? Correct. And then you have parking underneath where the solar system is at. Correct. Right? So that gives us plenty of parking. 
plenty of parking. Second of all, <laughs> you live, leaving the park in there eliminates the parking that we have already in the south side of the building to where we can utilize that parking as well for drop-offs and so forth for the kids. Correct. So as far as eliminating the parking space and so forth, is this in itself going to give, is expand, is tripling it, the parking? Oh, yes. So, so I, just wanted, I just wanted to emphasize that and just looking at this. I, I mean, <clears throat> I, all I can say is great, man. Let's, let's get him rolling. That's all I can say. Thank you. Let's get this thing going. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I understand what Ellis is talking about and, you know, the drop-off area. Right now we have the kids dropping off in the back. So realistically, if we do a roundabout drop-off on this new section, it will all be paved, all be parked. The building will wait down the road, uh, and uh, it's just like in the back. They drop them off in the morning, and the gate's locked, and that gate's not used anymore. They can't get out of that gate. they got to go through the front. I mean, that's the way it is, which will be fine because we're doing that right now. But uh, I really think uh, the roundabout uh, and having the kids drop off there, I mean, you can probably get 50 cars in that area dropping kids off in the morning. The only issue I see is when you're coming out the driveway, getting with the city in a right turn only. Right, we're talking about double in crossing over. There's got to be something there. And sometimes they put this kind of curve that kind of heads that direction, so you can only go one direction. Otherwise, we're going to have problems with cars crossing over the double, correct, right, and going making a left hand turn. So, uh, again, I know we're just discussing this, right? But I really, really think that that uh, drop off area is important. I really do. I understand. You guys are working there and does not have all these cars coming through in the morning. This is the maintenance uh, spot. I get that. But there's a whole bunch of space on the west side there to take care of that in the future. You know what I mean? And almost to the point to where we could almost isolate uh, the maintenance from the parking. Almost. You can almost do that. So, Isn't there a fence or something in between? There will be a fence in between. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I know you're talking about not having to drop off there. What's the reasoning behind that, or what are you thinking? Why, why no drop-off? You can go either way. You can use it as an alternative drop-off, you know, or additional drop-off, okay. uh, you know, uh, and that's that's really up to the board to decide. Yeah. Um, if we were to make it a, a an additional drop-off zone, I don't think the impact is going to be that big. I'm just looking at the safety coming out of the parking area onto Visalia Road. road. Yeah, and I'm plus, I think it'll be congested too. Uh, yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of congestion. Mm. Um, so utilizing it for putting staff there opens up all the other parking areas uh, around there because. Um, like uh, Alice said, you know, we do have the preschool drop off in the front. Um, we are dropping buses or dropping students off in buses on the south end yeah. of Snowden. Um, and um, ideally, where the student drop off is now for parents dropping students off probably is about the safest area. Uh, as a bus driver, a uh, previous bus driver myself, it's probably one of the safest areas because you don't have a lot of congestion back there and you have ample opportunity with different roadways. Yeah. And that's the parking structure in the south end of the Correct. Of school. Yeah. Yeah. We, we used to have drop-offs there. Yeah. And they work quite well. Yeah. And you do have a lot of options. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of options. Yeah. So, um, you know, if the board chose option one and we created that uh, as a secondary you know, drop off or something like that. It's it's really not going to eliminate a lot of parking uh, areas in that area. If you wanted to have that as an alternative uh, drop off spot, um, but you know, it's also nice to know that you know the staff can park there. Uh, we also have Tulare County Office of Ed that comes in on the south end of Snowden, where there's a lot of student drop off and activity there as well. Um, so I, I think uh, just the parking alone is really going to create uh, uh, better open spaces. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's like a late run, uh, parents running late, they can drop off in the front of the campus right there. You know, it's not going to be congested with cars as if it like today. Um, so you know, I, I that, that's why my uh, you know I, I put in a recommendation uh, to go. Option two, phase one, 
I did because if we had to use that area as a drop off, we could, mm -hmm. and then we can zone it for that yeah. if there's a need. I mean, yeah. but you, we could use it regardless. Regardless, you can use. You don't have to have that little. What zone. What I foresee is actually DCA students getting dropped off right there. Yeah. Uh, that's again, I, again our biggest problem is when they leave. Going on the Correct. We have a problem there, so. A drop off with the, that type of exit uh, is going to cause problems. So, yes. parking, but if we have a big event, everybody parks out there, they're going to the have the same issue in the evening time anyway. Everybody's got to get out of there. But right. It's not like they're in a hurry like they're in the morning because they're right. parked all the way up to uh, Visaya Road, clear to uh, the front of the office there. You know, the car's back all the way up to the. Yeah. And it, the traffic literally sometimes stops right there at the light. I see that every morning. But, you know, it's an option. If there's, they can uh, drop kids off there, that would be great. Right. It doesn't have to be a designated drop point. You pull in there just like the, any other parking that we have, and you can drop your kids. If there's a gate there, it'd be the same thing. Right. We're just not going to design it so that it is a drop off. You right. know what I mean? And you can get maybe <clears throat> 20 cars that go through there, and all of a sudden everybody's, well, hey, this is the quickest way to drop your kids off and go ahead in that direction. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, going yeah. out, I see the problem going out is the issue. Yeah. And busy times. But anyway, any more questions for the board? So well, we're, you know, I like, I, I'm sorry, no, uh, I, I like option two with the option of, uh, with the uh, dropping off and it seems like that's something that is, would be a, as far as the issue of it going, you know, folks making a left when they ain't supposed to, it sounds like that's something that we would need to work with the city to do something in the medium. And I think that would be a, a good joint effort instead of having a police officer waiting to see someone going a different direction, right? right? Um, uh, but option two with a drop off, I think, is most appropriate because I think that a lot of times, uh, and we hear it almost every year, uh, that the you know the clogging, you know, it's dangerous, you know, all this sort of stuff. And those that know most are the parents that are dropping off their children, mm -hmm. and people are trying to get into their their kids on time. And this long line, um, and I think that we have a responsibility to alleviate that issue. <coughs> it's great that we're going to address the issue of, of staff parking, the issue of you know event parking. But I think the most immediate uh, concern is when you're dropping off your children, and because that clogs up, you know, if the parents need to go to work or they need to go to the other schools or whatever, everyone's in a rush, especially at the beginning of the year. I think Aaron would agree. Um, but I, I think if we look at option two with, with design as a drop off, I think that would be the best. And I believe, I think if I was, you know, I had kids in school right now, I would use that if, you know, I would see where it's less congested and sometimes you start getting a feel. If my, my student uh, needs to walk a little further to get to class, as long as he gets there in time, that matters to me. Because one thing is, once they leave your vehicle, that's where, okay, I have no more control of them, but now they're on school property, right? Right. So that, to me, makes a difference. That's just my two cents. Alice, did you have another question? Yes, I was trying to figure out where the, the entrances would be for the Deep Creek and for um, Snowden. Where, where would those so be? So there would be gate entrances. Uh, and then it's actually yeah, there's one there. there. There's one right there. Yeah. But there's not one at Deep Creek. So, Asphalt area of Snowden School, where the basketball courts are. Right. We would do a gate entrance there. Okay. And then for Deep Creek Academy, uh, we would do a gate entrance in onto the asphalt area there as well. What are those little gray, um, the those lined areas? Are those handicap parking or what are they? The lined areas would be uh, no parking areas. Yes, you would have some handicap. Corners would be planters, mm. um, as you see up by the road too. Um, so those are just parking barriers that are naturally put in parking areas. Because you don't want a car in the corner because it won't be able to get out. Mm. Okay. Okay. Also, the district, uh, I've reached out with the city, um, and they'll do a plan review as well uh, on either option. Uh, to ensure, you know, the safety of people entering and exiting. Uh, the fire department's been out there when they 
did the demolition. I talked to the battalion chief. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be uh, offsets, uh, which are distances from the curb in, into the property. So that way when a bus pulls in, it's got room before it hits a gate. Mm -hmm. So that way it doesn't interfere with traffic. Mm -hmm. So those type of options, they're not in either of these yet. But this is a preliminary plan, so when we get more into a detailed plan, you're going to see those. Um, and I also uh, have worked with the police department uh, with their opinions and suggestions and their thoughts as well. So because there, there will be a lot of people going in and out and our buses as well. Well, I know, you know, we could always just put a right turn only, but... You know, just like out here, it says do not go through there and every day. You're yeah. absolutely right, People yes. still not obeying, so. Correct. Uh, okay. And then the, uh, I know like if you don't do a roundabout, you don't show them one way, just like all the other sites, if you don't show them where to drive, you're going to have people going this way and people going that way. It happens every morning, all right? So if you don't designate a drop-off, you're going to have a congestion, especially when you have an event at night. They're just going to pull it. We can get to the park as quick as they can. There's no flow. Okay, that's what you're going to run into. We have the same problem there at uh, Hester School. Same yep. problem. All right, so it's just a thought. If you don't show them where to go, they're going to go wherever they want. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Okay, so this was for discussion. Any more questions? Well, it is on for it the next for one. Yeah, I know that. Any yes. more questions? Yeah. This is for discussion. No. Okay. Mr. Yes. Um, would it be possible just to see with the board just the cost type and the process of this magnitude? That would be great. Okay. Yeah, because that's going to have a lot to do with everything. Unless Pat's putting a bill. I don't know. No. <laughs> he, we, we can develop a payment plan. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Low interest rate. There you go. So it was longevity. Can you write it a little bit bigger, brother? Yeah. Oh no, you do that again. <laughs> Dr. Chavez, you want to tell the kids what this, his purpose is? Explain. What his position? For the students. Yes. Are you guys curious who these people are? Yes. So here in the back, we have Mr. Pat Hunt. Give him a round of applause. He is our Director of Maintenance and Operations. He's a Sagittarius. And, and the, uh, <laughs> uh, he likes hot baths all the time. <laughs> and this is Mr. Jason Kaff. He is our Chief Business Officer. And so he's our money person. So right now we're trying to decide, do you all know the property that we were talking about behind Snowden? where there was those old houses, we knocked that down, and so we're gonna create a, a, a place there for the buses to park them, and also a parking lot, like what they were saying. So right now the decision is, do we go with one plan and make it into parking spots, or plan B is to make it a roundabout, you know, where you drive in, go around, and then drive back out to drop off kids. So. Okay, so I thought just it, would, it would be helpful for the board just to go over how we'd potentially fund a project of this size. So uh, the two options that the board has just seen are about, what, eight, nine million generally. So currently, uh, the community has passed the GEO bond, and so with that um, comes a series of payments. Uh, the way GEO bonds are done is they're basically paid every other year, uh, and that's due to certain tax limitations mm -hmm. regarding tax, uh, tax fees. So on our current schedule, just so the board knows, you, the public here, this is our current schedule regarding how we're supposed to get our geobond funding. If all goes to plan, this August of this August of this year, we're supposed to get uh, with the, with the, with the uh, years here. But August of this year, we're supposed to get about 2.3 million. In August of 2025, we'll get another 2.3 million. In August of 2027, we'll get another 2.3 million. So theoretically, all that money would sit there until um, we get enough. When we, when, the ad, when we add all these up, these total about $6.8 million. Now, this GL bond funds, it's, it cannot be used for any operational expenses. It cannot be used for salaries or benefits. Basically, for anybody, it can only be used for capital facility projects. So if all comes to fruition, we're looking at about $6.8 for the GL bond. 
And then, but we have some money set aside in a couple different funds. Uh, we have about $1.6 million set aside in Fund 350, and another $2 million set aside in Fund 401. So just for simplicity's sake, I added those two together. So together, the board has about another $3.6 million, excuse me, $3 million, uh, set aside for capital facility projects. So when we add our 6.8 from the GEO bond, our 3.6, that's currently sitting in the two different funds, we total about 10.4, um, which is basically more than enough to cover either, either of the two options the board wants to go with. The only thing that we'll have to take into, into consideration going forward is that the timing of the GEO bond. Uh, based on whatever option the board wants to go with, <coughs> we wouldn't have eight or nine million dollars until probably, you know, we're looking at about 2027. And I'm assuming by then the costs, like everything else, will have increased. Um, but I just wanted to share with the board the potential timing of this because for either of these projects, it'll be a couple years at least before we even have <laughs> either eight or nine million to move to move forward with either of these two options. Mm -hmm. And, in total. and Mr. Cav, if you can share with the board and our audience that the GEO bonds are also set for other projects. So if this project is 10.4, for example, that would take up the entire GEO bond, which would jeopardize the other projects yes, that we um, have talked about. In the past, a couple years ago, the board established a master facility plan, which I think you may have before you tonight. But I'll, just I'll be just giving like, it to you in closed session, board members. Oh. Uh, but just, to, but just like Dr. Uh, Chavez said here, if the board, if the board wanted to move this direction, most likely, either option one or option two would consume most of the funds that are set aside for uh, capital facility projects, and the majority of the geo bond that we're expecting to come in for the next few years. So we just wanted to share that with the board, so they. So when we move forward on either of these or whatever project the board wants to move forward with, we'll have to consider the cost and also the timing of this because obviously we want to make sure once we start incurring these construction costs, we have the money set aside to pay them as they come due. We discussed this in open session. Hmm? We discussed this in open mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's probably one of my biggest concerns is we have a list of things the bond was originally put out to do, mm -hmm. right? And if we agree to do something, you know, if we do, I think uh, picking up phase one, which is what we're most interested in doing and getting it done right away, and the rest of it, we'll have to figure out where the money's coming from. <laughs> so I get that, right. right? I think that would be, uh, if we wanted to move forward, uh, I think that would have to be a consideration on uh, accepting these uh, proposals. Well, I think uh, we have, you know, the, the 1.5, Yes. Uh, for the yep. phase one option two available in our yes. 3.6. <laughs> we do. Yep. So. Infrastructure complete, parking lot complete, and the building will have to wait. Yeah. And just to explain, so what they're talking about here is if we go with option two, phase one, that'll just be the blacktop. In other words, the parking. Mm -hmm. So they can then put the solar panels. You know how everybody's going solar now? So that would cover that. We wouldn't be able to do the buildings until later because you're kind of doing the math. If it's 10 point some million, we won't have all that money until 2027, right? So, so we're doing it in phases. I, I just is, are there any questions from the audience? Because you this is gonna this is your district, so that's what's happening. Okay. You guys wanted to have a tamale cell or something like that to help us raise money. <laughs> that raise that would be <laughs> okay. Lay away. Okay. Like it came or not like uh, any more questions? Okay. okay. So All right. we kind of discussed this. Now we're going to do you want to move forward with making a motion contingency? Yeah. On on fifteen point two? Yeah. Yeah. I will make the motion. We go with uh, phase one option two, making sure that we draw the money from the three point six. This well, is just yes. the parking. Just uh, do I have a second? You mean option two phase one? Yes. Option two phase one. Let me look again. No, you said yeah, you said it right. You just said okay. phase one, option two, backwards. backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm dyslexic, okay? <laughs> backwards. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> See. Uh, I will go with that motion this phase two option. Option two, phase one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, motion, Alice Lopez. Let me see. Option, option two, phase one. 
Second. Second by John Vasquez. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Thanks, boss. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll get you later. Uh, Next time. One. I'm write it down. All right. Let's Good job. On. So the aid, the aid write it down. <laughs> okay, uh, 15.3, ratification of Internet Service Equipment Agreement through Tulare County Office of Education. Move. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. 5-0. Aye. Oh. 15.4, ratification of Internet Service Equipment Agreement through Vast Networks. Move. Alice Lopez. Second. John Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. 5-0. Aye. Oh. 15.5, approval of transportation plan. Oh, move. Um, second. Alice Lopez. Rina Gomez. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 5-0. Oh. 17.0, oh, future meeting dates. 17.1, April 18th, 2023. May 9th, 2023. 20.0, uh, oh, adjourned to closed session. 21.1, uh, conference with labor negotiations. GC 549-576. Point six is the intention of the board to meet in closed session to review its position and to instruct its designated reps, agency designated representatives, Jeff Wemp, Jason Kraft, Manuel Mendez, name of organization, FTA, CSEA, management, 20.2, uh, conference with legal counsel, anticipation litigation, government code section 549-56.9, Significant exposure to litigation proceeding to subdivision D of section 549-56.9. Uh, 20.3, public employee discipline dismissal, release complaint, government code 549-57. Going to close session at 826. So at this time, our site administrators, uh, let's give our site administrators a big round of applause as well. Did I you're I you're free to go, uh, Mr. Calf and Mr. Mendez. If you can stay behind, everybody else can go. Um, students, we thank you for coming. You're you're not obligated to stay. Last time somebody stayed, we will come back out once we're done inside. Uh, but either way, make yourselves at home or make your way to home. Right, either way, right. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.
guys. Alrighty. What are we making? <laughs> it's my cat. It's my cat. Mm -hmm. What the heck? It's not me. It's just... It smells kind of like... Yeah, cat. It smells like cat. Say cat. It smells like cat. Okay. Back in open session at nine. What is that? Nine forty-eight. 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 Uh, Twenty-one point zero action taken on closed section items. Twenty-one. Oh. Hey, Chris. You're good? Yeah, then we can post with a picture now. <laughs> <laughs> you should be good? Okay. Okay. Uh, 21.0 actions taken on closed session items. 21.1 conference with labor negotiations. GC 54957.6. It, it is the intention of the board to meet in closed session to review its position and to instruct its designated reps, agency, designated representatives, Jeff Wimp, Jason Kauf, Manuel Mendez, name of organization, FTA, CSEA, management, no action taken. 21.2, conference with legal counsel anticipation litigation, government code, section 54956.9, .9, significant, significant exposure to litigation, proceeding to subdivision D, of section 54956.9, no action taken. Uh, 21.3, public employee discipline, dismissal, release complaint, government code 54957, no action taken. Uh, 22.0, adjournment at 950. 950, motion? Moved. Second. Alice Lopez. John Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 5 0. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good, good night. Good evening. Even when they just did the Pledge of Allegiance, I was like, I want to go teach first grade. Their little yeah. voices were so uh, cute. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I had already I seen them because I went to the. Uh, oh, you went to the thing? Yeah. Yeah, at, at, at the Hester. Uh huh. So I went and saw them, but I I could see them again and again. There's just yeah, they did really well. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna tell Jazz. Take care of the rest. So cute. These kids. Huh? <laughs>